if it ever was a time to live for the Lord, saints, now is the time. Amen. And I just got to share again the new, the, uh, we, got, we had a message from a sister from Virginia who left a message. And I, I just so happened to go back there this past Sunday. And the sister said, please give me a call. I want to come to your church. And I thought maybe, you know, she was on Virginia Street here in Dallas. That's what I'm thinking. <clears throat> but the sister said, I'm in Virginia. Give me a call. So I gave her a call yesterday. And lo and behold, her name was Sister Mary Graham, 80-year-old mother. And the sister said to herself, she said that, I heard y'all on the Internet. She said, I heard the broadcast on the Internet. And she said, I just want to make sure that's you all in Dallas, Texas, and this is old, old landmark. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, well, when I heard you say, I am not closing these doors for corona, she said to herself, there is a man of God. God's people are in search of God's people. The mother said, I have been telling my six children, should no pandemic or sickness put fear in the church like I see now. She said, especially when we saw God move through his son, Jesus. Y'all should have heard the mother. Boy, she was, I tell you, when you, when the, when you heard, I said, Lord, she didn't sound like she had two strokes. Oh, y'all, I'm telling y'all, God is good. 80 years old, sound in her mind. Speech is, 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 is you say, perfect as anybody else. And she said, I have not heard one preacher say we need to keep these doors open. From here to Virginia, saints, now I'm going to tell y'all something. I'm still going to say God got somebody somewhere. <laughs> but I'm just going to tell y'all, it's a, it's a crying shame. That mother is looking for somebody. She said every pastor she's spoken with every pastor she's here say that well it's just a time we really need to have common sense and this sickness is really serious and we need to take it serious and I said that's how we we see sickness as more serious than the work of God you know it kind of reminds me I've seen ministers come down here and try to cast out devils Anybody ever seen them just back up and put their Bible over their heart and, and hope something happened on its own? But it's sad that mother said, she said, we coming to see y'all. And she said, and I'm not coming by myself. I'm bringing the other saints too. I said, praise the Lord. You know what she also said? She said, pastor, these pastors are letting down all the holy standards of God. They letting in all the lipstick, the makeup, the jewelry, the pants, the wig. She said they letting it all in. I said, Mother, I said, I know you're telling the truth. But you know what she said? She said, I know I don't have to tell you this. She said, but I'm just going to tell you anyway. You keep right on preaching. I said, yes, ma'am. I sure will. She said, I know I don't have to encourage you. You already care. I said, but Mother, it still sounds good to hear somebody encourage us. In the faith of the Lord. And I was so glad to hear that somebody yet believed everything ain't right going to heaven. Y'all, God got people everywhere. Now, it, now, again, it's not a whole lot of us that believe the word of God like it's written. But God got people that yet believe like the preachers used to minister. And I was so, saints, I was so encouraged yesterday. I was so encouraged just to hear that, Lord, thank you. You got people somewhere. And we have been saying that, y'all, God got people somewhere. We may not see them, but God's people are trying to find God's word. All of these pastors down here today, y'all, they all got the same message. 
they all talking about you coming into your season, a prosperity message. They want the blessings. Amen. But you don't hear a lot of us talking about and putting a tag on sin. Amen. Sin is something we, we got to name it. We got to call it out. Me just sitting here saying you got to get rid of your sin. Somebody don't know what sin is. Somebody need to know that adultery and fornication you in. That's going to send your soul to hell. Amen. But saints, I tell you, my, our spirits were so lifted on yesterday. I mean, I, I was so glad. And I said, well, Lord, we was just sitting there saying, she said, they want to come and they want to stay the whole week. I said, well, my God. And I thank God tonight. Amen. I tell you, I, I praise the Lord for it. She said her and her daughter were saved. She said she had six children. And I believe she said two of them were saved and four of them wasn't. <laughs> and I, I, I tell you, the mother was so sound. She said she told her children, they said, Mother, what you want for Mother's Day? She said, don't go buy me nothing. She said, I want to see you that ain't saved go get saved. She said, you going to buy something for me ain't helping me. I want to see my children saved. I said, "Woo, that's a godly mother. Now, that's what a godly mother wants is to see her children saved. Second Timothy 3 and we're going to begin reading verse 1. You get there, say amen. amen. All right, this is what it says. This know also that in the last days, look at that, perilous times shall come. Y'all see that? In the last days, perilous times. That word perilous means trouble and it means death peril is death amen and we see perilous times even right now but we never thought these perilous times would run the church off how many know that's right <clears throat> we never thought that we would see the the church that God once moved in beautifully. I have to say once. Oh, Paul said, ye did run well. But who hindered you that we should not obey the truth? That's why the word says, this know also, see that? That in the last days, perilous times. Y'all, we're in a time of trouble right now. We're in a time of trouble. We ain't seen trouble like this. Y'all, I'm going to tell you how much trouble this really is. The people that are supposed to be helping naturally and spiritually, I see folk naturally trying to help in the hospitals. Spiritually, we ain't seeing much help. Y'all, Perilous times. I'm going to tell you what's happening. I said something earlier. God is showing who the pretenders are and who the true contenders are. Because it's one thing about a man that is in his flesh. He does not want to die. He is afraid of death. A man in his flesh. See, yeah, that's right. Yeah, God is running through our churches, and bishops and apostles are dying. Amen? I don't understand why the church is at alarm tonight when the word let us know that perilous times were going to come. Didn't it say it? Woo, uh-oh. I want the church house to hear me good now. Just because our bishops are falling, our pastors are dying, we don't, now, we think it's a time that we're supposed to say, hey, let's just stop having service, period. And let's just close the doors. But I want you to hear me good tonight because Peter told you what was coming. He said the time would come. That judgment should begin at the house of God. Woo. And he said, if it shall begin with us, 
What shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? What are we running from tonight? Perilous time. The Lord alarm you, church, that we were going to have perilous times. And look at our elders now. Y'all, they scared to go to church. They ain't scared of the beauty shop, though. Oh, Jezebel is still real. She want her wig. She need her hair cut. Yes, she do. She need her extensions. She need her hair plaited. Oh, we talking good about it, amen. Yes, Lord, we're going to talk good about it. Because we in perilous times. Don't y'all see what a spirit have come in. A spirit have come in. I want you to listen good to me now. If Jesus, if the word said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We let in perilous times, girl, we in the last days, saints. Saints, we in the last days. It ain't much spiritual help going forth right now. See, the spiritual is supposed to be able to help the natural. See, the spiritual can help the whole man and the whole woman. It can help you naturally and spiritually. But the church now, we more worried about folks sending their tithe money. Oh, Lord, help me tonight. We making sure folks getting tithe money sent. Pastor's preaching a hard, faithful message over the internet. But I say, Pastor, you need to be faithful to the work of God and open them doors back up. You didn't open them doors. God opened them doors, pastors, apostles, and bishops. God opened them doors. Amen. Now we in the last, I'm going to tell you how you see we're in the last days. This is how you know you're in the last days. Let's finish. Let's, let's look at what the first, what, what two say. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. They more concerned about their own selves than they are you. Did you send your tithes and offering? Let me tell you something. You still need to be sending your tithe. I don't care if you ain't got a job. You plead God for a job and send, send them tithes anyway and watch God move. Let me say this to you tonight, saying One thing about God, God is a fair God. God is not a God of unjust. He is a fair and righteous God. But that man you under ain't fair. He want money for the baby in your stomach. He want tithe for a job you don't even have. Woo! Well, glory to his name. That's why I say men shall be lovers of their own selves. Oh, y'all, this is what the last days look like. Snapshot. This is what the last days look like. Men shall be lovers of their own that's why they got all these bodyguards around them at church. Oh, but let me tell you something about the death angel. The death angel can't be stopped. Amen. A bodyguard can't stop the death angel. That's why you see our minister, God ain't doing nothing but judging the house of God first. What are you afraid of? It's because you've been lying the whole time. You ain't no man of God. You ain't no woman of God. Sit down somewhere. God didn't call you. And it's proof he ain't called you because you won't open them doors. Woo! Oh, that's right. It's tight, but it's right. If he called you, you ought to be on your post. If he called you, you ought to be doing what he said. See, when God called you, you ought to be in an answer. That, you know what an answer is? Meaning, yes, Lord. That's what the answer is. Yes, Lord. I'll do what you say. Oh, see, but, but men love themselves so much. They don't want to die. Amen. They in fear of dying. Well, we see all, all a lot of these ministers are dying in churches, and, and it ain't good for us to have whole conferences, and it ain't good for, you know what? It ain't good to play church. Somebody go and say amen. See, what ain't good? Judgment is beginning at the house of God, and preachers, pastors, apostles, and bishops, it ain't good to play church. Divorce is going on in our house more than in a, uh, than a sinner's house. And everybody's sitting around like ain't nothing going on. 
Because men are going to be lovers of them on sale. long as they putting good tide money in there, you can shut the preacher's mouth up. This is what the last days look like. I'm going to tell y'all something. This coronavirus, man ain't responsible for this. God is. God is tired of sin. God is tired of iniquity. God is tired of what man is doing. And he is sick of the church playing with him. God going to turn somebody over. That's why they didn't got scared and they don't want to come no more. Amen. Because the death angel is showing up in the church. Woo! But how many know we ain't got to be afraid? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Woo! Glory to his name. This is what the last days look like, saints. This is what it looked like. You never thought you'd see a time the choir ain't going forth. Amen. I said a choir. It ain't but a few. See, a few folk is just singing now. But it used to be a damn time the house of God was going forth. You ever think the damn time where the preacher can't lay hands? He's standing behind a, a, a virtual, virtual veil. See that? Didn't Jesus, wasn't the veil of the temple rent? The veil of the temple was rent when Jesus died. Look at the sun couldn't shine no more because the sun was on the cross shining. Amen. The, the, look at the, 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 the even though it went black, the, the, the sun was darkened when Jesus, the earth shook. Amen. Lord, have mercy. What Jesus showed us and he showed his disciples. Don't you know the very thing his disciples was afraid of? Jesus had to, it was important, that's why he had to reveal himself. So he could let them know, you ain't got to fear death. You don't have to fear death. Feel my hands, Thomas. See that? He walked right in there, Thomas. He didn't, he didn't have to be in there when Thomas said it, but he know what he said. Amen. Went through the door that was closed, but walked in the room and said, all hell, peace be unto thee. Thomas, feel my hands. Feel my side. Amen. He said, don't doubt, only believe. Amen. See, he was, he was encouraging his disciples that they did not have to fear death. What are we afraid of tonight? Men shall be lovers. That's why they spend so long in the mirror. You little pretty preachers, amen. Oh, yeah, these little pretty preachers, they spend longer in these mirrors than sisters. Their hands is prettier than yours. You say that, that's why you ain't got no anointing. That's why you need to stay home and you can't lay hands with your manicured hands. Come on, man of God, where are you at tonight? Amen. God's men ain't sitting somewhere getting their hands manicured. Before he go sit in the shop, he'll do it himself. Or he'll be at home working on himself. He ain't sitting there taking some woman's place. Because men shall be lovers of their own selves. You see that? Covetous. Tides. Covetous. Tides. Covetous. They still, they at home. They virtually in the building by themselves still believe. You're supposed to send an offering. You're supposed to send offering to a building you can't even get into. I said it. That's right. Tides go to the building. That Malachi said that it might be meat in my storehouse. They believe you're supposed to send tides to a building you can't even get in right now. I say, preacher, if you can't be faithful, how do you expect the people to be faithful? We got to be faithful to our calling. That's what the fivefold ministry was called for, for the perfecting of the saints. This ain't perfect what's going on. This men loving them said, well, I got to make sure I don't get sick. So I think we need to close down. 
Well, I'm glad Jesus ain't like man. I'm glad Jesus didn't just walk by the brother that was at the pool of Bethesda. Amen. And said, oh, you're a little too sick for me. The man that was lame and couldn't even walk. He was impotent, couldn't even get up, amen. But Jesus looked at him and said, will thou be whole? And the man got up. Jesus said, rise up and take up thy bed and walk. And Jesus, amen, the man took his bed and carried it. I'm glad Jesus ain't like men. Woo, I'm glad he ain't like men. Yeah, he was healing on the Sabbath day. I'm glad he ain't like men. See, he love us more than that. See, men that are of the flesh, they worried about catching sickness. Well, let me tell you something. But when you're in the spirit, you, don't, you can't worry about that. That's why the word said, walk in the spirit. You shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Men shall be lovers of them own selves. Covetous. They want that money, y'all. Covetous. I can promise you by appreciation time, the doors of the church will be open. I can promise you at anniversary time, the doors of the church will be open. Covetous. Greedy men. Don't never get enough. Building been paying off years. But they still acting like we working on the building. We working on the building. We working on the building. Look at what it says, saints. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. Too proud to do the work of God. Too proud to get sick. You know what? I want to get sick. Don't you know when Peter, amen, when they whooped Peter, said don't preach it in name, locked him up. And, amen, they couldn't find nothing wrong. So what they said, he told him, said, well, what, we, what are we going to do? We can't hold him. He didn't do nothing but heal the, heal the man that was sick. So what they had to do was let him go. Say, well, go ahead and chastise him a little bit and, and, and let him go. You know what Peter said? We were worthy to get a whooping. And somebody don't want to get sick. Brother said, we were worthy to get a whooping for the Lord. And look at us, don't even want to get our hand dirty and getting sick. Don't you know when you're anointed, you suppose that's why there ain't no anointing there. The anointing won't let you sit down. The anointing won't let you just say, it's time to close the door. The anointing won't let you stop. The anointing said, no, let's pray, beloved. Not when you're anointed. When you're anointed by God, I'm going to tell you something. You, don't, you can look at sickness and say, the devil is a lie. Hallelujah. That's why I said proud, boasters. See, these men that love themselves. Somebody is under a pastor. They love them, too. They love these pastors because he lets you do everything you want to do. Yes, right. Adultery is all right in the house of God now. You got all these wives sitting, ex-wives sitting in congregations, ex-husbands sitting in there, and everybody acting like, well, this is, a, this is such a proud family. Blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful. Unholy. Now, now let me just say this. Hold on. That's one thing to get a divorce. That's that. See, divorce ain't gonna send you to hell. But it's when we break the commandments of God. Divorce ain't gonna send us to hell. It's just when you're going out trying to get another one and you still got one living. And how many preachers is guilty of marrying and remarrying? Knowing good and well, you didn't remarry no widow. On a widower. Amen. Preachers are causing adultery to go far. If men would take a stand on the word of God, adultery wouldn't be in the house of God. They'd have to go down to the courthouse and commit adultery. But they're doing it through the church. Bishop marrying them. Apostle is marrying them. Pastor is marrying them. Amen. Look at that, y'all. Proud, blasphemous disobedient to parents. See, this is a clip shot of what the last days are looking like. All the, un, all the old bad children you wondering what's wrong with? Because we in the last days. These last day children we looking at. These last day children. Can't nobody tell them nothing. They got a cell phone that's five and six years old. Can't nobody tell them nothing. Disobedient to parents. Unthankful and unholy. Look at that. Without natural affection. I'm going to tell y'all something. This ain't natural affection that we see going forth right now. There is a special love for the household of faith. This ain't no natural affection, saints. 
Let me tell you something. Jesus died on the cross. I don't believe Jesus shed his blood for, the, for his people to get somewhere, stop doing what he said, trying to go, over, go to church over an uh, internet. No, that ain't what the Lord. That, this ain't, you can't tell me that this is what the Lord is calling the church to today. Well, this is going to be the new normal. Guess what? That may be your new normal, but in hell, you're going to lift up your eyes. The Lord didn't tell us to come over the internet. That is not supposed to be our primary source. You know, when we get over the internet, you know what it really should be? Rewound. See, the internet need to get something rewound. But it need to be live services going on. We can't stop doing what God told us to do. Because men are lovers of themselves. Look at now look how much power your bishop's supposed to have. He in a robe at every big service. Got a three foot bishop's uh, chain he wear. Somebody got an apostle ring tonight. Somebody got a bishop ring. But it ain't no power in your bishop and your apostle. All they doing is putting stuff in front of you to show flattery to you. He's trying to flatter you with things. Hallelujah. Without natural affection. Got a three-foot bishop's chain and ain't got a prayer that you can pray for somebody. This ain't what God called us to. Got an apostle ring and you ain't nothing but an imposter. Amen. God is showing who really is the church of God. It ain't a whole lot of people doing what God say. God's people ain't sitting somewhere nervous and scared. Now what would have happened had Peter and the 12 stayed locked up in their room for fear of the Jews? Come on, somebody. But I heard the word say they turned the world upside down. Down. They didn't do it in seclusion. No, they didn't. They didn't do what man told them to do. Even the Hebrew boys, they didn't bow down to what the king said. They didn't bow down to his music. They didn't bow down to the sack pipe and the harp. They didn't bow down when they heard that. When, he, when you heard the sound of the music, you should bow down and worship him. You know what they said? Oh, king, we are not careful how we answer thee. If our God don't deliver us, we know that he is able. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm reminded of how Daniel didn't eat the king's meat. No, he didn't. It was, it was a decree that everybody was to eat the king's meat. But you know what Daniel said? Just give us the vegetables. Just give us the, give us the little vegetables over there. We'll be fine. The Lord will bless us. But he didn't eat the king meat. And God bless his people. You know why? Because they were in a, a nation that had brought them into captivity in Babylon. And do you know what they did? They yet held on to the commandments of God.